In this video, we are going to learn how to implement local notifications on iOS and Android by just a couple of lines and this awesome, amazing plugin dot local notifications, which makes it easier than ever. Let's first inspect the end result. So here I'm showing you this only on iOS, but I promise you this video also has um, a, a, the Android bits. I'm going to show you how that looks as well. But here we have a button that says schedule notification and it will wait five seconds and send us a notification. So let's go to the background, wait five seconds and boom, there we have it. So it shows a badge, it shows a little bar and this has been scheduled locally. So that is very cool. And whenever I click this, I go in and I can get some custom data in here. I will show you that too. You can click the OK button. So let's do that again, switch off the phone and you will see the phone will wake up to show you this notification. Um, so that is really cool. And that is all that we're going to see in this video. But before we do, I need to give a big shout out to Jeremy Kaiser. Thank you for becoming my latest member on my channel. If you want to become a member, then you can do that by clicking the join button on my channel. And for a small fee, you get access to all the latest videos, even before they're public. And most importantly, you know, you're just supporting me for all the work I do. Jeremy and all the other members, thank you so much for doing that. And let's quickly continue with this awesome video. Now let's see how to implement all this goodness for yourself in your own application. Here we can see Visual Studio 2019 running on a Mac. And um, this is just a file new exam forms application. On the left, you can see the XAML page. On the right, you can see it actually running on the iOS simulator. Um, on the iOS simulator, we've already seen like the end result for Android. I'm also going to show you just the end result. Um, so stay tuned for you know the rest of this video and you will see what it looks like on Android as well. Um, but you know, I will be showing you the iterations through iOS. Um, first, let's update the title as always. And here we go, local notifications sample, save that. And with hot reload, it's automatically updated on my running iOS simulator, or, you know, it also works on a physical device. Um, and let me remove, well, actually, let's first install the NuGet package, of course. So let's go over to the solution, um, right click on the solution level and say manage NuGet packages. And I'm going to search for plugin, dot local notifications. There we go. And it's created by Elvin Tudugala. So thank you so much for that. I hope I didn't butcher your name too much. Um, but thank you so much for putting this together. You can see there's um, other plugins as well. I think one notable one is um, shiny by Alan Ritchie. Um, so go check that out um, as well. But you know, I'm, I'm showing you this one for this video. Um, but here we go Add package and you need to install them to all um, platforms because you know, this uses um, well, I want to say custom renderers, but it's not rendering anything, but it uses platform specific code on Android and iOS. So you want to install this on all of your projects. Now this is going to take a little time. Of course, we've reviewed um, the, the, the terms of usage, uh, the license, and we've accepted those. So it's installing on our project right now. There we go. Now, another good thing to note is that you need to use this with Xamarin 4.5 minimum. I think there's a specific 4.5 version, but you know, you should be using Xamarin Forms 5 anyway. So um, just stick with that. And the other thing is you want to target Android um, version 10. So if we go over to the solution and we go over to our Android project and select the options right here, um, you can see here in the general tab, compile using Android version, which is a target framework. And here I have 11. So that's even higher, you can do that too. But at least it should be Android 10. And this is the target version. So this isn't the minimum version, which you can see here under Android application. My minimum version is Android 5. Um, and my target version is Android 11. So you know, those are two separate things, but you need to target Android 10, at least um, for this to work properly. So now that we got this in place, let's actually remove all these labels here. Of course, I need to restart my application in a little because I made some changes that are not done through hot reload, but I'm going to remove all these labels and add a little button here that's going to say schedule notification. And let's add a click handler on this thing. Generate that for me automatically. There we go. Save it. And it will actually show me the button already, but it's not going to work. Um, I'm going to go to my code behind. So go to the solution, main page, main page, example.cs. Um, and now it's time to set up my notifications. 
So under this button, you can do this, of course, through any other way. You can do it through a button or automatically in the background, uh, but I can schedule a notification, which is going to be really cool. Um, I can just say var notification is new notification request. I need to use some adding here, so let's go to the little light bulb and using plugin .local notification. that sounds good. Um, so it adds this using right here, you can do that manually too. And now it knows about the notification request, which is something inside of the local notifications uh, package. So we can initialize that with a, a, a whole bunch of properties. Let me scroll this up for you a little bit. And so you know, here you can see them all basically. So they have some Android specific things, some iOS specific things, which is really cool. I'm going to touch upon that in a little bit. Um, you can configure a batch number. In fact, let's just do that right now. Um, batch number is one. So it will have that little batch number on top of it. Um, a description. So let's do a description. That's going to say test description so that we know that it's a description. Uh, what do we have more? We can have a title. So notification. T no, no, T F E typing is hard notification. There we go. And uh, what we also can have is some returning data, which is cool. So you can put some data in here uh, that you can, you know, update from your app as well. Uh, it is a string. And if you want to use multiple things, then I think um, this package also has um, something that's called the object serializer, um, which probably, you know, puts everything in a two string and can deserialize it for you, which is um, very handy if you want to do this thing. So that way you can put multiple data in there, but um, you know, at its core, it's just a string. Um, so let's do some dummy data here, how we can use that. We will see that in a little bit. Uh, returning data and a notification ID. So this makes it a unique identifier for your notification. So um, look into that, what that is specifically, but basically you can give each notification a ID and you can, um, you know, cancel it with that um, ID or you can, you know, um, override it or, or whatever. Um, so make sure that you know what that is. Let's just make it uh, 1337 for now. Um, but look into what that does. It, it might be important when stuff is not working. And um, so the other thing is also interesting. We have like um, um, a couple of other things. So you can specify a custom sound. Um, you can say if it's repeats or not. So you can make a recurring kind of notification, which is really cool. Um, so if we say that you have a couple of options, we can say no, which is probably the default. Uh, we can say daily, weekly, or a specific time interval. And when you want to do a specific time interval, I think you have to here set the notify repeat interval, and you can do something with a time span. Um, and you can set a repeating notification, which is really cool. So you don't have to schedule it yourself each time. Now, the thing that I'm going to do is just the notify time. So I'm just going to set the time, which is going to be daytime dot now dot add seconds. And I'm going to add the five seconds to whenever I press that button. So I can close the application or do whatever you want. Um, and within five seconds, it's then going to show that little notification. And so you have a lot of, oh, actually I was, I promised you to do the iOS and Android specific stuff. Um, you need a new object with that. So this is the iOS options. Um, this only has the hide foreground alert. Um, so that basically allows you to send a silent notification. Um, so it doesn't show that little bar thing whenever, um, you know, the notification comes in. And for Android, I think there's some more options, um, new Android options, there we go. Here you can see we have a bunch of options. So we have the auto cancel, the channel ID, the channel ID is important. I'm going to show that next. Um, we can set a color, we can set a group, we can even set the, the color of a LED if that's something that's on the device. Um, if it's ongoing, what the priority is, and you can even add a progress bar. So, oh, there's even more, there's even more. Uh, you can add a timeout and a certain vibration pattern. So lots of things going on here, which is really cool. Go check that out for yourself. Or, you know, as always, let me know if there's something specific that you want to see. Let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to answer you or maybe make another video. Um, so let me finish this up first. So we can say now notification center dot current dot um, show. So this is the API basically for this whole plugin as well. Um, we can say cancel. So here we have that notification ID coming in. Um, 
So that's this one that you can see right here. You can cancel that specific one to not show it. You can cancel all. So if you have a recurring one, you just cancel them all, never show it again. Um, these events received and tapped, I'm going to go into that um, in a little bit. And here we have the show, which I'm going to use now, um, which is the notification. There we go. And now it's going to show it. So that's how you set that up. Now, one thing that we need to do for Android is go into our solution, go to our Android project and our main activity. And I'm going to set up that channel that there we're talking about. So because on Android, you have to work with specific channels that you can send notifications to. So you can also create multiple channels and you can say, Hey, I want to send this to this channel, which is, you know, kind of specific to how push notification works. So, um, find out how that works. Uh, but you know, if you want just want to do the default kind of simple um, notifications, local notifications, then this is going to be enough. Um, so let's go into notification center. Oh, it also doesn't know it here, of course, notification center. So I should be using plugin dot plugin dot local notification here. And now it knows the notification center. And I'm going to create the notification channel. So there's another um, extra stuff that you can do here as well. Uh, but you know, you can just here set this create notification channel, I think technically, it's only um, um, uh, necessary whenever you set it um, on API level 26 and higher. And also here you can, you know, um, set some um, configuration here, I guess, but this is more like the advanced stuff. So you can also here set some um, um, configuration on, you know, how it should view on the simulator. So, um, you know, that that is stuff that you can play with, go check that out. Um, but you know, this is the default, this is enough to send the actual notification. So I think we set it all up. So let's stop this one and start it again for iOS. And let's see if this is actually going to do something. Here we go, notification is coming up. And now if I press the button, then we have to go be quickly here within five seconds. And boom, there we have it. So we can see our batch is zero, we can see our notification is coming up, which says title notification, good, um, test description, test description, um, after five seconds. So that is really cool. That's all the things that we can see whenever we tap it, we are brought back to the application. So that is really cool. If I do this again, and I shut it off. So I press the power button on my simulator. Um, and we wait five seconds, you can see it wakes up the device and it shows the actual notification as if it was like a more remote notification because you know, the, the concept is very similar. Um, so that is how we can implement these local notifications very quickly and easily. Um, now let me quickly show you a couple of other things as well. Um, I want to show you also the events that were here. But let me actually just do this. So we also have uh, no notification center dot current dot notification received. So this is only fired um, on iOS whenever it's on the foreground. So I'm just creating a new event here that's going to be handled with this notification received. Here we go. And then I'm going to say um, display, whoops, display alert. Um, and let's say uh, notification. Actually, I think we can actually get the data from the event arcs right here. So let's say e dot there we go e dot title. So let's just do that e dot description and um, an OK button. So OK, there we go. So this is only fired for iOS whenever it's in the foreground, because typically I think you know, the notifications, let's actually try this out, do not show whenever you're in the app, I think there's it does or doesn't Oh, in this case, it does. Uh, but you know, you 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 might Maybe people have set it up differently. So um, whenever this happens, let's quickly start again. Um, you can handle whenever it's received whenever the users in the app, you might, you know, do nothing. Um, or you know, you might show this dialog box or whenever it's a silent notification and just pushes data in here, then you know, you might want to handle that data maybe. Um, so here you can see this is this is has the same data, and you can show it like this. Um, now this works, I think always on, on Android. So there it probably registers a service which will always run. Um, and then you can handle all the things that are going on in here. But you know, then you have to figure out like, hey, is this something that is 
um, it, is it in the foreground, yes or no? Because else you're not going to be able to display an alert, right? So that is something that you um, need to figure out. Now, I think also for Android, you um, need to do some other thing for this event. So you have also the notification center dot current dot um, tabbed. Here we go plus is create a new event handler. There we go. So whenever the notification is tapped, so the actual bar thing, whenever the app is going to open, um, then you know, you can also trigger some, um, some actual things. So that is cool too. And um, let's just display another alert. There we go. And I think this has a different set of the event arcs. Here we go. Yeah. So here we can find that um, notification tab. Let's do this. And I think here we can say like e that e data. So this is that um, returning data that we supplied here, right? So let's see um, if we can get that out of there. There we go. And this might not work on everything because this might, and also this one, by the way, um, they might be running on a separate thread. So whenever it doesn't show or it doesn't behave, you know, you want to influence the UI and it doesn't work, uh, be sure to wrap it in a device um, begin invoke on main thread. And I think um, Xamarin e Essentials also has something to do um, for, for the main thread. Um, but just to make sure that it, you know, all shows up. Um, because if you want to do something with the UI, then you have to make sure that it's running on the main thread, because that's the only thread that can access the UI. So there we go. Let's make sure that this happens. Um, and then whenever we stop this and we run it again, we should have this code as well. Um, and we should be able to get that extra data out of there. So let me do this and go out of here. And whenever we see our notification coming back up, then you can see the badge again, and we can click it. And here we can see that dummy data going in. So here we have the notification tabbed, and we're showing a alert with the extra data. Um, also, nice to note whenever you, you know, handle that notification, whenever you go into the app, the badge is cleared automatically. So that is good too. Um, now for Android, let me quickly um, implement the last bits here um, and then show you how it actually behaves on Android. So if we go back to our main activity, um, the thing that you want to do to do that um, um, tapped event to catch that, we need to add another thing here, notification center, um, dot notify uh, notification tab. There we go. And here we have to put the intent in here. So that's something that, um, you know, is known within the Android app. So we have an intent and we need to create a little um, event that can actually handle it. So protected um, override uh, and then it will help us on new intent. There we go. And then we first want to do the notification center dot notify notification tab. So what this is doing um, is just, you know, um, oh, we want to get that intent from uh, the parameter there. So what this basically probably only does is actually fire the event that we've hooked up here in our main page. So notification notification tab will just pass along, you know, something happened on Android. Um, and actually with this in place, let's check out how this um, shows on Android. So here I am back on Android and you can see the exact same interface and I can just say schedule notification. So let's do that and get out of the app right here. And I can see, you know, the, the little um, um, icon of the app right here. And you can see it doesn't show for this Android version an actual value in this batch, but it does show you the little dot that something is going on here. And also in the top bar here, um, I think this has something to do with that um, notification channel that if you want to show the, the actual bars right here that you have to do some configuration in this notification channel, but you can see that the um, notification still shows up. It says notification and test description, the things that I configured earlier. Um, and whenever I click this, it will take us to the app and it will show us the notification data just as well. So that is how all of this behaves on Android. And you can see, you know, it also handles this um, same notification whenever we are in the app. So it does both now, which, you know, might be a bit too much. Um, so we probably want to, you know, go back in here, the main page and say, whenever we received one, uh, we only want to do this for iOS because that's the only 
case that makes sense, right? The runtime platform is um, device.ios. I got a whole, whole video on how to do this platform specific stuff. It should pop up on your screen right now. So go check that out if you want to know more about that. Um, now it only does it on iOS, but this is how it shows on Android. So just as well, um, a little bit more configuration, but other than that, it's very, never been easier actually to set up local notifications on iOS and Android. Now this has a lot more customization options. Um, you can do all kinds of things as I've just shown you. I've shown you the APIs and I've shown you how to implement the basic usage, but beyond that, there's much more to do. So let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to see or if you have any questions and I'll be sure to answer them. Maybe join my Discord server if you haven't done that already. Um, you know, there are some people that you can interact with and ask questions and we're there to help each other out. Um, like this video if you've actually liked it and of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and I'll be seeing you for my next video keep coding